Since the origins of life, it is believed that more than 99% of all species have disappeared, which makes it quite clear that all living beings have an expiration date. However, despite the inevitability of extinction, it is always sad when a species ceases to exist, and once they are gone, many aspects that characterize them remain hidden. That's why in today's video, we will tell you all about the last sightings of four animals that recently went extinct. However, people tend to forget that often the last photograph of an animal was not the real last sighting, making it difficult to date the last time a human saw the extinct creature. In fact, in many cases, a dying species has managed to survive for years after its last encounter with a camera, which somehow makes the last sighting or documentation of an animal much more somber than the photograph, as it marks the last time an animal was ever seen alive by humanity. Animal number one, the Caribbean monk seal. The case involved the Caribbean monk seal, which since its extinction has become a favorite among prehistoric enthusiasts, as while seals are undoubtedly cool, this seal was quite unusual. It was the only known seal native to Florida and the Caribbean. You probably haven't heard of a colonial seal while on vacation in, say, Miami. Besides its distinctive range, the monk seal was quite normal and similar to other seals. It was characterized by a unique mark on its head and was quite robust and long. It could grow up to 8 feet from head to tail and could weigh up to 600 pounds or 270 kilograms, giving it great robustness to withstand the low temperatures of its time. There are also estimates suggesting a population of over 3 million. One of the main reasons behind this was the lack of natural predators. In reality, only large sharks were a concrete threat, specifically great whites and tiger sharks. It is also believed that orcas occasionally hunted these seals, but only sporadically. This led to a fairly relaxed life, which quickly changed after early explorers documented the first mentions of them. These references actually come from Christopher Columbus's second voyage, where some documents suggest that Columbus encountered them in the wild, specifically on the Alo Island. It was reported that the seals were extraordinarily docile, showing no signs of aggression or fear towards humans, and in fact, they often approached sailors with a high level of curiosity. However, this friendship was short-lived, as several of these sailors killed eight resting seals before returning to the ship. Subsequently, seals became a favorite hunting target for other travelers during the 14 and 1500s. For the most part, hunting was kept at a sustainable level, and it wasn't until the late 17th century that this changed when sugar plantations began sending large expeditions of people willing to hunt and kill hundreds of seals each day due to the great benefits of their oil for lubricating machinery. It's important to mention that the hunts became even more widespread and intense once fishermen joined the fray in the 1850s. This, along with the beginning of commercial hunting, led to the rapid decline of the Caribbean monk seal population. Although hunting these seals ceased to be profitable over time, they were still killed and captured for various reasons, including research. Many hunters aimed to send these specimens to zoos worldwide, and it was precisely in one of these zoos that the last known photo of the Caribbean monk seal was taken. This photo dates back to the early 1910s, and while the images stopped there, the seals actually persisted in the wild. The last specimens disappeared at the end of the 20th century, confirming the official extinction of this gentle aquatic animal. After this, it became very difficult to see any monk seals, and the hunts ended due to the difficulty in finding more specimens. With the last known seal killing, they practically disappeared until 1952, when the director of the Jamaican Institute reported finding a small colony of no more than 60 seals. The colony, although small, was in good health and were probably the last of their species to be seen in their natural habitat. Strangely, after this, the Caribbean seal was seen again by some sailors who reported quick sightings during their sea voyages. However, these reports never provided solid results or concrete evidence of these encounters. Despite this, the Caribbean monk seal was officially declared extinct in 2008, 
after an extensive search that lasted several years, no successful results were found, marking the end of this gentle and friendly creature that disappeared unexpectedly and violently due to human greed. Animal number two, the Falkland Islands, wolf. Now, let's talk about the Falkland Islands wolf. This canid is the only known terrestrial mammal native to the Falkland Islands, specifically found both in the west and east of the islands. Its origins are quite complex. Some date its first sighting to 1690 when Captain John Strong became the first known man to set foot on these islands. He and his landing party described seeing what appeared to be large foxes, roughly twice the size of English foxes, they also noted that these wolves showed no fear towards them, but fortunately, the wolves did not attack them. Instead, they decided to take one of these wolves back to England to show the world and study its strange form and nature. The wolf spent its journey amicably with the sailors, although it ended in disaster. After several days at sea, the English ship carrying the Kennet was involved in a battle with a French ship. During this fierce conflict, the loud cannons scared the Falkland wolf, causing it to jump overboard and be lost at sea. Following this event, many more encounters with this strange canid occurred, making it one of the most famous animals of the 18th century, allowing people to understand what this animal was like. Many travelers claimed it was a wolf or a fox, leading to disagreements about its nature. Nonetheless, everyone agreed it was large, especially compared to canids found on other islands. People often responded by shooting the wolf to save themselves from what seemed like a violent attack. However, this fear of attack would someday disappear. Years later, specifically in 1964, the first European settlement was established on the islands, quickly increasing interactions between the settlers and the Falkland wolf. Also, it was at this time that researchers learned much more about this curious creature. One of these observations was the fact that there were two different variations based on where the wolf lived. In the west, the species was smaller and lighter in color, while in the eastern populations, the wolf tended to be larger and darker. Additionally, the wolf showed a very diverse diet, consuming insects, geese, penguins, and other small animals. But that's not all. In some cases, small groups of wolves were reported taking down large seals. This surprising hunt was carried out in packs, usually consisting of more than four individuals working together to feed during times of food scarcity. The Falkland wolf was also capable of hunting alone, thanks to its ability and lethality. Many saw the Falkland wolf as a fierce killer, leading settlers to kill it using poison and fire. These settlers also mistakenly thought the wolf was killing their livestock. However, it was eventually revealed that the sheep were simply confusing its howls with those of a dog, causing them to flee and escape. Nevertheless, settlers worked hard to eradicate the wolf, with fire becoming the preferred weapon. They even started fires across the island to burn the wolf. Amidst the chaos, groups of these wolves were seen trying to find refuge without success. Unfortunately, many of these wolves died in the fire, unjustly killed by settlers who initially grew fond of them but then sought their extermination due to a misunderstanding. In conclusion, this species of wolf was rarely aggressive towards humans and unfortunately faced a dreadful fate leading to its extinction. Animal number three, the quagga. This next animal is quite peculiar. As at first glance it appears to be a horse, but it was an endemic zebra of South Africa with a unique trait. Researchers and scholars have classified it as a single species, but in reality it was a subspecies of the common zebra with significant divergence from other subspecies. Incredible, don't you think? This divergence contributed to its iconic appearance, with specimens having a limited pattern of stripes, mostly white and brown at the front, while the back had no stripes. It was brown, giving it the appearance of an animal caught between a zebra and a horse. For this reason, many considered it a unique species, originally because of its pattern. They were also quite special in size, as unlike zebras, it was longer and taller than stallions, reaching up to five feet in height. It also held the title of being the southernmost zebra in the region of South Africa where it lived. 
Herds consisted of between 30 and 50 members, possibly forming groups with other subspecies of Burchell's zebra, along with other zebras. On the other hand, the koi koi did not interact much with this animal, so it wasn't until Dutch settlers arrived that the quagga started to see more humans, and not in a good way. Unfortunately, the Dutch considered them easy and good food, so they began hunting them for personal consumption. The quagga survived with difficulty until 1883, but its species persisted until the 1930s when it presumably disappeared without a trace. Sadly, no photographs were taken of this solitary animal. Additionally, there is a sad story that potentially a quagga spent years wandering the wild, unaware that it was the last of its kind, which could potentially have been a tragedy. Animal number four, the sambar deer. A large species of deer native to Asia, specifically Thailand, it is recognized by its seven current subspecies that vary in aspects such as size and physical appearance. It resembles the muntjac, but constitutes a separate genus. It is the largest of all oriental deer. In general, the length from nose to tail is between 5 and 10 feet. Its height ranges from 3 to 5 feet at the shoulders, and its weight is usually in the range of 350 to 1,200 pounds. However, some individuals can grow a bit larger. The largest male weighed up to 1,200 pounds. There is marked sexual dimorphism as males are significantly larger and heavier than females and also have antlers up to 43 inches in length. People in Thailand still hunted them, specifically the first humans who entered Thailand. But for the most part, hunting was quite limited and only increased during the wet season when floods occurred. During this time, the sambar deer's habitat suffered greatly, leading to lower specimen numbers exacerbated by increased hunting. Also, with habitat loss, the deer were forced to venture more into human areas, falling into the hands of hunters, and within about 30 years, they had gone extinct. The last herd was seen in the early 20th century, and the remaining specimens rapidly decreased each year until only one remained. This last deer was seen around a temple in Samut Sakon and was described as a deer with a friendly personality. This sounds like a somewhat happy ending for the last recorded sambar deer, and we hope it was for this gentle animal. If you like this video, support us with your wonderful like and subscribe to our channel for more videos about the prehistoric world. Tell us, which of these four extinct animals caught your attention the most? Which one would you bring back from extinction? We'll be reading your comments. See you soon.